Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. Today we're talking about worry, anxiety, um, overthinking. These emotions, how they affect our body in a Chinese medicine way. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that little button down the bottom that says subscribe, the notification bell that supports the channel. And here's another way you can support the channel as well. We're sponsored by the Mushroom range of Empirical Health products. So you can click the link below to jump onto their website to order any of their products. And when you do and you use the code Marie, M-A-R-I-E, you'll get 10% off your order and you'll also support the channel. So every purchase supports the channel. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Empirical Health. So let's talk about worry and anxiety and overthinking. So these are all emotions that relate to the earth element in Chinese medicine. This video is part of a series that I've just recently started about emotions and Chinese medicine. So we started with joy and that video was titled, Can You Have Too Much Joy? And it was all about the fire element and the different emotions associated with fire. Well, today we're talking about the next one in the cycle, which is uh, earth. We're talking about worry, pensiveness. When I was studying Chinese medicine, I remember my teacher saying that word pensiveness and I was like, what, pen, what, what does that mean? I'd never really heard that word used it's not something that we would say in australia to define our emotions so we should probably firstly discuss what that means um, it's this roundabout way of thinking where it's going around and around circular thinking it's part of it could be worry it doesn't have to be fear based like that if there is a fear component to it it could be more relating to water and this is where a type, types of anxiety can relate to earth and water kind of together the fear component is much more related to water and we'll get to that in another video. But today we're talking about like when you just can't stop thinking about something. Now, every element also has the mental emotional housing of a function. So the function in the earth element is actually the yi, yi, the yi, which is your intellect. So it's kind of like a spectrum of intellectual, and I'm sure you know some intellectual people that you think they just think too much or think too deeply. But in order to be intellectual, in order to have that intellect, we do have to think deeply. So this is, is an area that's often taxed by doing study. So if you're a student, and many people watching the, my videos are students, so <laughs> welcome students. And I've been a student, I'm still, I guess I technically am a student, student of life, um, life university. <laughs> but when you're a student in a course, it, that is taxing. I know, I've done many degrees and I've, I know that I know, <laughs> I know I used to stay up all night long trying to find the eighth day of the week just so I could finish my master's degree, for instance. And apart from the, the, the lack of sleep, the just the mental taxation of thinking through problems, thinking through solving things, um, probably intellectualizing an argument in an essay, that kind of stuff can be taxing on our spleen energy, our earth element. So in this video, we're going to get into some things, some tips and tricks you can use to help you to have better study habits, to not tax your body and to deal with things when you find yourself overthinking and worrying like that. So before we get into the detail of it, I have to remind you that Chinese medicine sees emotional stuff affecting the physical body and the physical body affecting the emotional side of our body. Either one or the other could happen or both could happen. So when we think about how does worry or, or overthinking pensiveness affect the body in Chinese medicine, we think, well, how do, what else does the earth govern? What else does the earth look, look after? Primarily our earth element is our spleen and stomach, and that is concerned with digestion, which is a huge area of our body so if you've ever had like butterflies in the stomach type of thing where you've gone to give it give a talk or you've had to do something it, it, it this happens a lot when people do a public presentation and they feel so nervous that they that they feel really sick they can also feel sick to their stomach or they could vomit from that nervousness from that worry they think well what if i make a mistake what if something happens and you know we'll work themselves into a frenzy even and this can often happen when we're younger we don't know how to control our emotions very well and we can easily let our emotions control us and some kids can be you know petrified of doing <laughs> having to do a particular thing and because they're thinking about it they're worrying and worrying about it and they worry themselves sick so that could happen to kids it could happen to adults what is actually happening there in Chinese medicine is we will we say that worry knots your spleen energy the spleen chi so the spleen chi's job 
is to transform and transport food and fluids. So if you're new to Chinese medicine, you might think, wow, that sounds like mumbo jumbo. That's, <laughs> that's not what this blade does. It's the metaphorical concept of this earth element. So you could also think about this from the perspective of the yin of the earth. So we, all, we have five elements in our body and each element has a yin and a yang concept. And within that yin of the earth, the yang of the yin, <laughs> if you want to go down that path, is the transforming and trans and and like the aromatic function of digestion. So Chinese medicine likens that to the cooking pot on the stove. And I've got a longer video on this, one of the most popular oldest videos I've done called Why Eat Mostly Cooked Foods. And that kind of explains the, the boiling of the essences, the transformation and the transportation of food and fluids and why to support that process, it's so important that we eat cooked foods. So if that's not something you're already doing and you were drawn to watching this video because you think, yeah, I have a lot of worry or you think oh, I could do with helping my worry, then I would hazard a guess that your digestion might have some imbalance there. And if it does, the first place to start in addressing that imbalance would be to eat a lot more cooked versus raw. Unless you're in the height of summer and it's very hot for you, then maybe that's it's okay to have some raw or more raw in your diet. But in general, with most people in Chinese medicine, we think cooked foods is a lot better than raw foods. Why is that? Because it's like a pre-digested thing. It's easier to digest. And the, the cooking process heats the food somewhat. So especially if it's fresh, it's freshly cooked, um, you're consuming these aromatic essences from the food, that's all good. So that's one thing. Another common thing I see with people's dietary habits is the overeating aspect. And this can be really complicated. I don't want to make this video too much diet related, but we kind of can't help it because that's what the spleen does. That's what the earth does. <laughs> it does digestion. And we also think of it as like digesting food and digesting thoughts. So you digest a thought, you have you think about something, you let it ruminate in your mind, you you know, and you decide what to do with it. Do I let this go? And do I keep hold of this? And it, this is kind of what we do with our digestive system. We take something in, we decide, do I keep hold of this? Now, for the most part, we do. If it's toxic that you've eaten, you vomit it out. You would, I don't know if you've ever had that kind of a food poisoning when you've eaten something and it has been toxic and you just naturally, you know, within half an hour of eating it, you might go, oh, I really feel sick. Oh, oh no. And you're running to the toilet. So uh, we have to have that same idea with our mind. We sometimes let things come in that are toxic that we should probably throw out. We shouldn't let them sit there and have a room, have a place in our mind to kind of sit around and, you know, do that. So getting back to the digestion, the next thing I wanted to mention was overeating or eating too much food. And how this can become so difficult and so problematic for people is the, the, the processed nature of foods makes it very easy to overeat and not feel satisfied. So you're still eating and eating and eating because you're still hungry, but those foods don't make you feel satisfied. So anything that comes out of a packet, anything that's got the trans fats or the hydrogenated oils or the canola oil or these kinds of things, in general, <laughs> this is a blanket statement, you know, things that have got salt and sugar in them are going to make you feel like you want to eat more of it. And they're not going to satisfy you in terms of your nutritional needs. And so you're going to feel still feel hungry and you often, you know, feel like, oh, I could keep on eating more. It's really interesting uh, for me. I've, this is today is day 33 of doing the carnivore diet, right? I'm strictly. So I'm doing a thing called 75 hard. I'm doing lots of exercise and I did that last year. And this year I thought I would do it again because it's springtime and that's a good time to kind of get into vigorous exercise and strict stuff. So no alcohol, no, um, no cheats on the diet, nothing like that. And I've experimented a little bit with the carnivore diet this year on and off, but I found myself eating things that I love to eat, right? I love a good pasta. <laughs> I love, um, I don't know, a birthday cake or something like that. And I've gone for long periods of time in my life without eating sugar and then I can just go back and eat sugar, right? Every time you, I, I notice this, and I'm sure that if you've done a diet like this or you are on a, on, a, on a stricter diet or you've done a keto diet, for instance, where you're not eating any carbs or very, very low carbs, as soon as you have any of that stuff, you feel like it more. 
so the first few days when I started doing this, I probably couldn't have even made a video talking about pasta because I was still thinking about it and missing it. Whereas now I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I could see a pasta and I'm not like, yeah, oh, I wish I could have that. Um, I'm sure that if I ate that, it would taste delicious to me. No doubt about it. And, um, you know, but then I, I, I remember, you know, it wasn't a few, it wasn't, a, it was only a few months ago that I remember I wasn't really eating a lot of pasta this year because I've been very better, much better with my diet in terms of just not not going there, right? Not even making a, a pasta here or there. But once as I remember, I made one and, you know, you ate a whole bowl of pasta, enough, like a meal. And then because you've made it, there's heaps left over. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just have a little bit more. Maybe I'll have a little bit more. And next thing you know, you've eaten two bowls of pasta and you're still not really you're still thinking, yeah, I could eat a bit more. So I feel like there's this criminal aspect to foods that's just part of society now. And it's very hard to get away from that. Um, so I'm not s suggesting anyone do the carnivore diet, but I have found that to be very helpful for myself. Do, do the, you know, I don't give people individual advice on this channel, but for me that has helped um, a huge amount of things in terms of, well, choice, there's no more choice. <laughs> you know exactly what you're going to eat but it's made my brain become much more clear and I feel like I've got a lot more clarity now there are other ways to get that clarity with your diet you don't have to just be so strict and do that but we have to recognize the effect of these foods on our psyche on our emotions sugar for instance is a big one so the sweet flavor like overwhelms the spleen very easily what does the sweet flavor do in a in a good good way uh, it, it nourishes your body right so it provides um, instant energy do we need as much quantity of that instant energy as most people consume on the regular if they aren't on a sugar-free diet right so just just if you're not on a sugar-free diet you're going to consume sugar because sugar is in all of these foods that are just around us to to eat you know you buy a pasta sauce and there's probably sugar in that pasta sauce right so i'm not even talking about putting sugar in your coffee or so like like eating chocolate or things like that but if you do have those things the more you have that, the more you crave that. So a little bit of that sweet can be calming to your mind and it can sedate and sort of relax you, right? I mean, you feel good from, from it. But it's very hard to temper that, as in to moderate that. Um, and if that's the kind of person that you are, which it's no shame in that, I think that's for most people, um, then it might be better to not have it at all than to... Um, or to limit what you have as in terms of saying, okay, I am either only going to have that food on the weekend or I'm only going to have that kind of food on special occasions or I'm only going to have honey as the sweet in my life um, or whatever you're going to you know, choose to, to have rather than saying I'll just let it be a free-for-all. So th this is a core part of the health of the spleen and the stomach is protecting that digestive system. And it, it, if it's enabled to function properly, then this process called the clear yang rising occurs. So what happens is when you eat your food, the essences are kind of steamed upwards and you get this clarity, you get this clarity of thoughts. You don't have cloudy headedness. You don't have a cloudy, um, you know foggy mind but also that bogginess could happen down below the stomach like in the in the in the intestines where you feel bloated um full big um even pain gassy that kind of stuff so it's not always associated with worry because there are some people that are that don't have any issues with their digestion that still have worry but it is a common association. So one way you can help your body if you are a worrier and you're thinking, I just don't know how to change my patterns cognitively or I've tried that maybe with a psychologist or something like that, focus on your diet and go for things like mostly cooked foods, eating regular meals. So your stomach 
and spleen love regularity. They love to know that this is what I'm doing. Um, now, whatever that may be, I wouldn't force anyone to do three meals a day um, for every person. Some people are better off with two meals a day or one meal a day even. But it has to be regular. That's the point. It has to be regular. It can't be like one day I have this, a few days I have that, or as regular as possible. Um, it depends on what you are eating as to how regular you're going to eat, need to eat, and what else you do in your life. You know, some people expend a huge amount of energy in their job, physical energy, and they probably need to have a massive breakfast or a big morning tea or something like that to be able to sustain the energy they need for the rest of the day. Whereas some people are better off almost fasting right up until lunchtime and they might have better productivity on an empty stomach. So we can think about how that affects our emotions from an empty stomach with the earth element because it's the, the stomach part of the, the, the earth, which is the, the place that receives the food, it, in Chinese medicine, we have this saying saying it likes to be full and empty, full and empty, not grazing all day long. So it likes the idea of it's going to do its job and then have a rest, do its job and have a rest. And the point is it needs to have a rest. So when it's resting, it's empty. There's nothing in your stomach. It's not doing the job of digestion. And your body's always competing for this, for your mind, for your clarity of thoughts and digestion, because these two things are kind of co co um Existing at the same time is very difficult for it to do. And this is where you'll notice if you ever go to a conference and you have the speaking spot after lunch, they call that the graveyard shift because people are sleepy, they're tired. If you've had a big lunch, you don't want to be sitting there and thinking straight after that. So we're thinking about, we're thinking about thinking, we're thinking about the emotions of the earth element today, not just worry as in, okay, worry is not great for us, but what about the good aspects of you know, the, 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 the ye, the intellect, the good aspects that are housed, the emotional aspects that are housed by the earth. So when we think about the intellect, how could we have a better intellect? How could you harness that? How could you promote that? So there is benefit to having less in your tummy, less in your stomach, eating less and having better productivity. Now you can't eat less forever. Otherwise you'll get hangry. <laughs> you'll get very hungry and you'll also disrupt this um, full and empty, full and empty. You just be continuously empty and you won't have the nourishment. So you have to have both, but you it's not great to expect I'm going to eat food and keep on going at the same level. So you should allow that time to have your meal and enjoy that meal and don't do things while you're having that meal. That's the next thing in digestion with Chinese medicine is to think about don't be doing other things while you're eating. So it's better even not to watch TV, but certainly not watching the news or something that's gonna get you riled up, something's gonna get you really emotional, really charged, that kind of thing. Like you want to eat your meal in peace. <laughs> it's all they'll earn is golden years, magic golden years, and you're gonna be mad at yourself. If you have an emotional kind of dinner table where you're not getting along with other people that are there. Man, that's where all the fat and calories is. You know where that come from? Watching that damn TV. Every time you turn it on, they got somebody in there talking about lose weight, get healthy, get in shape. Get it's probably a bit of a rarity these days to have a dinner table where everyone sits around and has their meal at the same time. But that can be beneficial. Having a family makes people do that, right? Everyone sits down and has the meal at the same time. That is really good for your health. And if you can establish something in your life where you're doing that, it's good. So you're not watching TV while you're eating. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family, my two beautiful, beautiful, handsome, striking sons. So that, that's super important. So when we have worry, it's knotting the spleen chi, right? So it's kind of it causing that spleen chi not to be able to descend properly and you won't get the best out of your digestion. So if you are a worrier, not a warrior, a worrier, you worry a lot, you may find that eating is difficult because you might feel that you have a low appetite, don't feel hungry much, you might lose weight, um, you could you know, struggle with, with putting on weight, that kind of thing. So it's 
possible that acupuncture could help you from that worry perspective by strengthening the spleen, looking at, at there's a, there are ways that acupuncturists can kind of address that worrying issue. Um, and that may then pave the way for your appetite to be restored, right? Rather than just going, oh, I'm just going to try to eat anyway, even though I don't feel like eating. Another pattern that can happen for people, another way of that pattern transpiring is actually where people's um, food intake gets really out of balance and they find they get binging or purging or like an eating disorder. They maybe can't stop eating certain foods. They might get very overweight. They have like ex intense cravings, like craving sweet, you know, and then salty, that, that, that balance of sweet and salty. So it, these are the things that your spleen energy um, and your earth energy looks after, primarily the digestion. Okay. The next one that it manifests in is your muscles and your limbs. So when people have uh, an earth element disharmony, they will sometimes get like heavy limbs especially if they have a dampness situation. So if you've ever been diagnosed with dampness or you think you have dampness, it's going to primarily affect the earth element anyway. And one of those symptoms of dampness is heaviness. So heaviness in the limbs, like people just feel, oh, my arms feel heavy, my legs I feel like I'm dragging myself around. Like it's, it's very heavy and it's sluggish. You know, really slow, movements uh, maybe mus muscle pain and these aren't aren't things induced by exercise muscle weakness could be part of that um, so it makes sense that if we strengthen our muscles in some way that that can benefit us as well and that's where exercise could actually benefit you there's lots of research that supports the idea of exercise benefiting your mental health in many ways and for, often for people when they have mental health issues worry and anxiety overthinking is kind of part of it not being able to let things go so one of the things you could do is go for a walk and do either a mindfulness practice while you're walking particularly if you're the sort of person that's like oh i'm so fidgety i don't know what to do when i'm walking i'm not sure you know if you find you've got an ipod or something and you can listen to some songs that in, you enjoy and you're enjoying that music go for it do that there are things called walking meditations, walking mindfulness, where you can actually um, like get a, a, you know, a guided sort of things to think about. Being grateful can be a big part of um, breaking that cycle of, of anxiety and worry for people, like focusing on things that you're grateful for. So you can proactively like preempt that, don't wait for the worry to kind of come in. Um, you can put your fo like you. Th the thing with worry is that that's where people's minds go. So it's not like your mind just sits there doing nothing. I don't think anyone's mind sits there doing nothing. But you, if it gravitates just towards this, oh, I'm worrying and I'm worrying and I'm thinking about that. You may need to train your mind to gravitate towards something else. So by focusing on stuff that I'm grateful for. So you wake up in the morning and you say. I'm going to name five things that I'm grateful for every day when I wake up. And you might need to write this on a piece of paper and put that somewhere where you see it. Back of the toilet door is a good one. So most people use the toilet when they first wake up in the morning. Um, maybe put it near the kettle if you make a coffee or a tea or something like that. So you go and you, you see that and you think, okay, I'm going to name five things. I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful I'm alive today. I'm grateful I'm awake. Um, I'm grateful I um, had a good sleep. I'm grateful that... Um, I have my health. I'm grateful that I have a job to go to today, even though you might not want to go to that job. You know, these kinds of things. And you set your mind on something else, a bigger, something bigger than, than that. Worry thinking tends to go more and more insular, more and more internally and more and more smaller. It doesn't think of possibilities. It's the what if, um, worst case scenario kind of thinking rather than the oh, what if that happened how amazing would that be how great would that be some other more um, personality type things to think about with the earth element and emotions if you are an earth type when an earth type gets out of balance that worry can be a big factor there right overthinking and pensiveness and worry 
um, and almost like worrying about things in other people, getting yourself into other people's business that isn't really any of your business and has no consequence in your life. That can be a, a trait of an earth element person that's kind of out of balance, you know, like the, like the intrusive neighbor that pops over all the time or wants to know what's going on or, or really concerned about stuff that really isn't their, their place to be concerned about. So what benefits an earth type in that way is friendship. So meaningful relationships, having someone to talk to is important. And that's important for everyone, but it's important, it's super important for people in that, that are that way inclined, because if they don't have that, it's quite hurtful to them. They don't have that out. They need that outlet. Um, it's hard to just get friends when you, when you've lost a friend and you, you know, you have that place in your life and it, but it, it's a good, it's good to do that. It's good to make that a priority. It's good to think that that is important and make that something that you're aiming for in life even so go and meet people go and do something new join a join a new gym go for a join a walking group in your, in your community um do you know join a community garden a anything that gets you out there to meet different people to to find you know the more people you meet the more chance you're going to have of meeting making friends um games nights and stuff like that or even just igniting old friendships and think yeah you know what it, the chances are the people that you call up are also lonely too <laughs> and they could do with you sticking your beak in their business a little bit sometimes right so you, you obviously need a balance of, of those things but what i'm getting at is don't neglect friendships and the benefit of that social connection that social relationship is really important um so for, for earth people, they kind of they kind of need that. They also are usually very family orientated people. So they, you know, it could be very hurtful or very difficult if they're going through a time where they've been ousted from the family, ostracized from a family, don't feel included, that kind of thing. They feel they, they do well when they're included in society, in their part of society. So they, you know, need that, that social standing. Not so much a social status of like, oh, I need to be recognized for what my achievements are. That's not that. That's more of a wood trait. More of a, they like, they, they like to be needed and they need to be needed. Then this is a trait that we all have inside because we all have all of the five elements within us. Um, one of the factors of intrinsic motivation from a psychological perspective actually this is interesting kind of tie-in um, there's a theory called the self-determination theory and one of those factors is that people need to matter to others and others matter to them in order for people to fully have autonomous motivation they need two other things as well but let's say um, we're talking just about that aspect of the earth element uh, that that is a very earth element thing is mattering to other people when others matter to you so how do you know if other people matter to you like are you needed is there someone that relies on you um, will people notice if I'm not there like this could be um, within different circles of life as well so you could have that in your family life but you could not have that in your workplace so you might not feel like you belong in your workplace because you feel like, well, no one really cares if I rock up or I don't rock up. They might not even notice if I wasn't there for a week. Would people notice? Would life be able to go on without me? Now, you don't want it to be, you don't, sometimes you don't want to matter so much that <laughs> no one can go on without you. But that helps people actually have a, a, a sense of like autonomous motivation, which means they're going to want to do the things in their life by themselves without anyone telling them like what to do. And they're going to, actually have a higher sense of of happiness and um, health out of that sense of autonomous motivation so um, getting back to the earth part this mattering to other people like being needed by others like it, you know this changes as you change roles in your life and you know things happen like when you're when you're younger and you have kids they really need you and then as you get older your kids don't need you as much but you still matter to them right hopefully <laughs> you're still important to them and not only are you needed by others but um you have other people um in your life that matter to you 
like that you're that's important to you so you know this is also why people stick around in hard times and they don't just kind of end it all because they think like I can't just let other people down I, I'm needed by other people and you know these the, it's good to have that circle of life kind of around you and the earth personality type the aspect of earth which is not just in earth people but in all of all of us have that earth as that's an earth trait of the family of belonging nurturing you know um welcoming and like not always but often this can be through food right through meals through meal time at, at the table you know let's share a meal let's find out what's been going on in your day let's really get to know each other often that getting to know people and really building deeper relationships is through food it's through sitting down at the dinner table so it's not about what you are eating but it's about that time spent and hey we all have to eat and let's enjoy this let's make this part of it and so i think that's something to be thinking about you know so chinese medicine kind of understands it in that way right so that's important is to make sure you've got good relationships and to be working on that no matter where you are like you might have lots of relationships but if you neglect those people they're not going to be there for you and you know you like if you're not there for them then they're not going to be there for you <laughs> when you need it but also understanding from this self-determination theory that you might not feel like being there for them, but it actually is beneficial to you to be there for other people. <laughs> yep. So it's helpful to do that. It's good to have people in your life that you know you, know you can rely on and others know they can rely on you. Um, so that's, that's the earth element in a nutshell. So it relates to digestion. It relates to transforming and transporting food and fluids. Um, it can also relate to water kind of pathologies in our body where we get, you know, dampness or we get puffy or that kind of stuff. We also relate that to the lung and the water element as well, the metal and the water element too. Primarily, it's your digestion of food, right? Your digestion of thoughts, your digestion of food, your thinking, your intellect, your ability to think through difficult problems, um, relationships and social sociability and um, neediness is kind of a big aspect of it being needed wanting to be needed um, helping others in need this all this kind of stuff and muscles we've talked about that it's easy to say to people look don't worry stop worrying worrying won't help he won't help you but it's an often an ingrained pattern in our life and hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit about these internal connections and how this could be ha wreaking havoc in your body so for instance if you are eating a lot of sugar in your diet then that would be a big place you could intervene if you're having a lot of cold and raw foods that's a big place you could intervene having a very steady diet regular a regular diet the same kind of thing regularly as long as it's healthy mostly cooked foods a, a balance of flavors you know mostly that sort of bland flavor generally a higher protein diet is actually better for us for most people they need that and you know the the not this sort of up and down of flavors and regularity right so having regular meals making time to sit down at the dinner table and eat dinner with people who matter to you <laughs> hopefully that's the the main part of this video that hopefully because that's important it's important for our society to get that reminder don't watch the news while you're <laughs> or even this youtube video while you're eating your food so um, i hope this has been useful and helpful to you and if it has leave a like leave a comment let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this or you've got a question about chinese medicine you can put that in there as well and i'll see you again on another video soon i'm going to finish up this series we're going to go through all the five elements with the different emotional aspects of them so i hope this has been useful to understand worry pensiveness overthinking possibly anxiety have a great day see you again soon bye